Welcome everyone to uh, the fourth uh, episode of the Blocks of Technology Security video podcast series. Uh, my name is Greg Greenlee. I'm going to be your instructor, your host, your narrator, uh, your tour guide for the day. Uh, we're going to talk about some uh, Security Plus um, goodness here. And I just messed up my timer, my stopwatch. No, I didn't. Still going. Uh, I need the stopwatch to uh, notify me of how much time I have left to uh, record this video. So uh, we're basically going to get into um, where we left off last, which was we were talking about um, multi-factor authentication. Uh, we started talking about some identity proofing uh, for verification and password reset systems. Uh, we're going to start this off with talking about Kiberos. Uh, Kiberos, what is Kiberos? Well, Kiberos is an authentication mechanism used within Windows domains and some Unix environments. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it's used to um, authenticate users and grant them access to uh, network resources. Uh, Kiberos works uh, with a uh, key distribution center and it works on uh, a ticketing system. Um, you basically ask for uh, access. You, you basically ask the, the the key distribution center uh, for access to a resource, and it goes through a process in order to grant you a, that access. So uh, there's several requirements uh, that need to be met in order for uh, Kiberos to work. Uh, time synchronization. Uh, so that requires that all um, systems in the Kiberos. Uh, um, within Kiberos, within the network, to be synchronized within five minutes of each other. Um, it's used to timestamp the tickets uh, that Kiberos issues, uh, and it helps to prevent replay attacks, uh, where a ticket is intercepted and is later used to impersonate a client. Uh, it requires a database of subjects or users. Uh, in a Microsoft environment, this is Active Directory, of course, uh, and a method of issuing tickets. Uh, which is the key distribution center and we're going to take a look at uh, how that actually works so I'm going to uh, zoom in here on the whiteboard and we're basically going to go over how uh, Kiberos issues uh, tickets so we're going to start off with this is you right here you are wanting access to this network resource how do you get access? Well, you request from the KDC, which has two parts, authentication service and a ticket greening service. You request access. The first thing is you send a request uh, to the KDC and uh, it authenticates you. Um, so you say, hey, I need a ticket for uh, greening tickets, which is a TGT. You uh, contact the KDC, the authentication server, a service answers and says, "Okay, well, well, let's authenticate you first. You issue, you put in a password or whatever. Password matches up. It grants you a TGT. Uh, you then use that TGT to grant a ticket uh, or service ticket from the TGS, the ticket granting uh, service." So then, you say, you take this TGT and you present it to the TGS and say, hey, I have an authenticated uh, ticket here. Will you please uh, grant, grant me a service ticket in order for me to access uh, this network resource? Uh, it then sends you a service ticket. Once it uh, uh, verifies that that uh, TGT is, is, is valid, and then you present you are granted access to this network resource and that's basically how uh, how Kiberos works in a quick nutshell. There's more to it uh, you can look on uh, the request for comment uh, RFC for, or for more information on that but that's basically how it works. Uh, Kiberos uses port 88 by default uh, it uses symmetric, symmetric key cryptography what that means is there's one key to encrypt, one key to decrypt, uh, and it's basically a single key used for decryption and encryption. Asymmetric is using uh, uses uh, public key infrastructure uh, where a user has a private key to uh, encrypt the data and the public key decrypts that data. We'll get more into that later on, 
uh, in later chapters and when we begin talking about public key cryptography. Uh, then we move on to LDAP. LDAP is a lightweight directory access, it stands for lightweight di directory access protocol and it specifies formats and methods to query directories uh, such as Active Directory. Uh, you can set up open LDAP on a, uh, a Linux server uh, to, uh, uh, as well. Um, and it, it uses, uh, LDAP is an, an, is an extension of the X500 standard that was used in early uh, Novell implementations uh, and early Microsoft Exchange so, uh, versions. LDAP version 2 can be encrypted with SSL. LDAP version 3 can be encrypted with uh, TLS. Uh, ports used by LDAP are 389 and 636. Uh, 636 is used when encrypted with uh, SSL or uh, TLS. Uh, mutual authentication is um, basically accomplished when both entities in a session authenticate with each other prior to exchanging data. So it's almost sort of like um, like a phone call. Uh, you call and you say hello, um, and that person asks, and you say, "Can I speak to so and so?" And that person says, "Oh, this is so and so. Oh, this is Greg. Oh, it's Greg. Oh, okay. I know you. You know me. Let's start uh, exchanging uh, or conversing or exchanging data. It's kind of how um, mutual authentication uh, operates. Uh, MS Chat version two and uh, is an implementation of mutual authentication. Uh, single sign-on." Uh, that refers to the ability of a user to log into multiple systems by providing credentials only once. Uh, there's examples of this uh, in environments uh, where, uh, like Active Directory environments, uh, when you sign into Active Directory uh, network and then you automatically are logged into or log, logs you into your email as well. Uh, there's websites that um, that use a single sign-on process uh, to allow you to gain access to other resources uh, as soon as you sign in. So um, that basically that's how it works. Um, let's go. An example is a user needs access to multiple servers um, within a network. Signs in once to uh, the network, and then he's able to access those additional servers as well. Uh, that kind of works uh, using SIDs and DACLs. A lot of acronyms uh, when it comes to security, uh, when it comes to technology, period. Kind of get used to it. Uh, SIDs is, stands for uh, Security Identifier. DACL is Discretionary Access Control List and is used to identify who can access any object uh, in a system using Discretionary Access Control Model. Um, Microsoft uses the, uh, the DAC model uh, to, uh, to protect files and folders using NTFS. Uh, if you ever right click on a file or a folder uh, and go down to properties and then um, I have to check to see how much time I have, uh, a couple of minutes, uh, and then you uh, click on the security tab, you can actually uh, you have a, uh, a list of users and resources that are allowed to access that resource and you will have the permissions for that resource. Uh, a, a SID is um, is actually a secure. Um, I'm sorry, a security identifier, and that is uh, given to um, users in the system. Uh, and what happens is, once you uh, get granted a token to access these resources, that token includes uh, the security identifier uh, for you. Uh, you then, once you want to access a network resource, you present that token. Uh, and that token uh, actually, or that, t that resource actually checks the token uh, against what it has in its uh, DACL and see if that matches up and then you're able to access uh, that resource. Um, logical token, single sign-on actually uses that method of uh, logical tokens and, uh, and secure, sec uh, security identifiers. Uh, I think that's about all the time we have for right now. Uh, we're going to finish up the chap chapter in the next um, the next episode. We're going to talk about uh, 802.1x uh, for uh, wireless uh, authentication, remote access authentication, MS Chat version one and two, Radius, 
and T-A-C-A-C-S. That's all I have for you right now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.